All right, so I want to test out the RX 6600 since this is the um, lowest and why well, it's not the lowest end of the RX 6000 series, but the 6400 and 6500 are, yeah, well, anyway, it's the lowest end one that I've got and that I recommend purchasing. And I want to see how it performs with Intel's new XCSS image upscaling. Um, and so Death Stranding is interesting choice because it also features AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0. These are very similar technologies, although AMD's is kind of hand-tuned and XCSS uh, was trained on machine learning. However, when you're not using an Intel GPU, you lack the dedicated hardware to accelerate this, so it has to run on a DP4A fallback, and long story short, that means we not, might not get big performance gains. So I thought, let's go ahead and just take a look, see what happens on the RX 6600. I'm running it at 4K currently with the game turned up to its maximum settings, but it says custom because after going to maximum settings, I went ahead and turned off motion blur so that when we uh, see things in motion, um, we're seeing the blur introduced by the uh, upscaling technique versus um, you know, just seeing what motion blur looks like. Now, if we look at the performance in the game, again, this is at the native 4K, pretty much maximum settings with the game's temporal anti-aliasing. Well, we're at about 45 FPS, so we're certainly not getting a 60 FPS or anything like that. And while we will test out in motion, let's also test out in, you know, standing still so we can get easier. You can jump from one thing to the next, kind of side-by-side -side comparison type stuff. I just clicked on the wrong buttons. We're going to go graphic settings. We're going to go ahead and drop on down to Intel's XCSS technology. And we'll go straight to the performance mode to see how big of a performance boost can we even get on an RX 6600. So... Let's back out of the menu, and it looks like we are almost up to 60 FPS, but, you know, going from 45 to 56 is not a huge performance gain, and I can tell you right now that I can see a loss to image quality on things like the grass, the foliage, they do look a little bit more blurred together, although things look, you know, reasonably okay. Let's now per, uh, compare this... Um, to the next setting up. So the balance setting should look a little bit better. You're running at a higher internal resolution, but because of that, we'll get less of a performance gain. We're now only up to 51 frames per second. So not a whole lot of performance gain from Intel's XCSS on the AMD RX 6600. Uh, this is not boding well for its comparison uh, performance-wise to FSR 2.0, although there's also the image quality to consider. And here we are down at basically even frames per second with the native render. Uh, image quality-wise, I mean, I think it seems pretty comparable to the native resolution, although maybe in motion or looking for other details. Uh, we would maybe notice some some other issues. Now, this does have an ultra quality setting. However, I think that this is probably going to run worse than native because you're not gaining much from uh, the slightly lower render resolution. Yep, we're down to 41 FPS. So running the XCSS algorithm takes up more time than you're gaining from the uh, lowering the render resolution at ultra quality. Now, if we go ahead and kick on uh, AMD's uh, FSR 2.0. Uh, let's actually do this one backwards and say, what if we started out at the quality setting, so that's the best it can look, and let's see what kind of frame rate boost we get here. So it's looking like at the quality setting, we're up to 56 F FPS, and that's about where the performance mode got us on Intel's XCSS. So in other words, from a performance standpoint on the RX 6600, at 4K at least, uh, Intel's XCSS performance mode seems to be giving us the same performance roughly as uh, FSR 2.0 at the quality setting. So even if XCSS did provide a better image upscale, uh, you at the same resolution, because FSR 2.0 is running quicker, you're going to be able to keep the render resolution higher, and I would imagine that that would then mitigate most of the advantage that XCSS might have if it has some uh, over the actual image quality. Going down to the balance setting, it looks like we're actually over 60 FPS now. 
at 4K, pretty much maximum settings in this game. Now I will say that Death Stranding in general and this scene uh, are not the most demanding things in this game, so I'm not guaranteeing you over 60 FPS the whole time. But now if we go down to the performance mode where we're upscaling 1080p to 4K, it looks like we're now over 70 FPS into the mid 74, 75 FPS range. So quite admirable performance and standing still, the image quality still looks fairly good. Although I think in motion is where you'll see some of the uh, some of the downsides to a lot of these upscaling techniques. So let's go ahead and go to the ultra performance mode. And that's where I'm starting to see things looking a little bit fuzzy on the grass, although we are up to uh, you know almost 100 frames per second. And I think the next thing I'd like us to look at is motion. So let's go ahead and try running back and forth at the ultra performance mode I feel like I see some blurring to his legs and feet and objects that are being, uh, you know, as things become visible as the arms swing by, things like that. There's a little bit of flickering and loss of resolution. Although the uh, overall performance gain here is, is quite good at the ultra performance mode, but I would not recommend this one in terms of image quality. Let's go ahead and try it out in motion going to the performance setting. So at the performance setting, we're now around 75 FPS. Again, this is like a 1080p to 4K upscale. Again, I think the, the biggest places you can tell we're not at the native resolution are definitely, like I said, in motion as his arms and legs move and you see things become visible like as, it, as those arms pass over it. I think you can see a little bit of the breakup to the image. Um, I can kind of show it off here. If you look at the trail kind of behind, as things become visible that were covered up by the body, things can be a little bit blurry at first. It's not bad, but that's one of the uh, more obvious downsides to the FSR 2.0 algorithm. Uh, let's go ahead and kick this up to the balance setting and take a look at it in motion. Again, it looks like at the balance setting, we're almost locking 60 FPS. Now I am recording this on the GPU's hardware encoder rather than through a capture card. And sometimes that can cause one or two FPS of uh, frame rate. So, you know, this probably would be closer to a locked 60 FPS if we weren't recording. Anyway, let's go ahead and um, where was it? Go on up to the quality setting. So quality setting, FSR 2.0 in motion. And we're now down, you know, we're down in the lower 50s. You know, overall though, like I said, I know this isn't the most demanding game in the world, but uh, the RX 6600 is putting up a pretty good show here performance wise. Um, this is not a 4K GPU, really. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and now look at XCSS in motion. We'll start at the performance mode. Yeah, I, I can instantly tell some blurring to the grass as soon as I kick that on. Anyway. Yeah, it looks like the performance here is very comparable to what we were seeing from the quality setting even in motion on FSR 2.0, but I've got to say that while the frame rates seem matched, the image quality of FSR 2.0 quality seemed better to me than, than XESS at the performance mode. And I think that kind of answers the question at which one should you use um, if you're running this kind of a GPU. It just seems like, you know, XESS doesn't compute fast enough on the, uh, on this GPU in order to make it worthwhile over the either native performance or using AMD's own FSR 2.0 upscaling technology. I do think it might handle disocclusion better. Like the motion of the legs and arms and things becoming visible uh, out from behind that, I do think it might actually be handling that a little bit better than FSR does. 
but the performance gains just really aren't there. Again, here at the quality setting, we're at pretty much the same performance we get at the native resolution, which we'll test out next. Ah, we fell over. We crashed, guys. Oh, ignore his language. I'm sorry, guys. I try to run a family-friendly channel over here. How could you? <laughs> All right, and then we've got um, the ultra quality setting. Where is it? Ultra quality. Ultra quality. Again, we're at worse performance than we got at the native resolution. <laughs> So I don't think this one's going to make a lot of sense here. Yeah, the frame time graph looks pretty nasty there as well. All right, let's go ahead and swing on over to the native resolution. So we'll kick XCSS off, and we'll turn the temporal anti-aliasing back on in the game. And we'll do a quick run back and forth again at the native performance level. So yeah, we can see the ultra quality was definitely worse performance. The frame time graph here is also smoother on the native than it was at the FSR ultra quality, sorry, at the uh, XCSS ultra quality. And let's go ahead and kick on a different render resolution. So this GPU is not really a, a 4K GPU. So <laughs> let's, although it, you know, it did did manage it with the upscaling here. Let's go down to 1440p. Once again, we're on the native resolution. So 1440p maximum settings in this game. Uh, we're sitting here around 85 FPS, 86 FPS. And let's see if we get any sort of a performance gain out of the XCSS upscale. Uh, let's try the performance setting. So we were in the mid 80s at the native setting. Going down to performance, we do go up to 100 FPS, but yeah, it certainly looks blurrier to my screen overall. And I'm curious if at this resolution, the um, the FSR 2.0 quality is still going to be roughly the uh, performance equivalent. Let's see if we get to around 100 FPS using this setting. Yeah, FSR 2.0 quality once again seems to be the performance match uh, to, F to XCSS performance. <laughs> and I've got to say the image quality looks significantly better since we're able to match frame rate with a higher rendering resolution. Uh, let's go ahead and kick on down to the 1080p settings. Oops, that's up to 4K. Let's go down to the 1080p. Well, anyway, here's F uh, sorry, XCSS on the uh, performance mode at 1080p. It's having had some issues turning it on while I was recording. The game wanted to crash. Anyway, so uh, there it is, though. <laughs> doesn't seem to be gaining us a, a huge amount of performance, although I just realized for image quality here, I should have uh, TAA turned on. So let's go back to doing that. So um, anti-aliasing TAA. All right, so I mean, doesn't seem like it's particularly worthwhile at 1080p. I mean, it looks like you do gain a little bit of performance using it at the performance mode, but it didn't look good. It looked extremely blurry at that low of resolution because I think that's basically like 540p upscaling uh, to the uh, <laughs> um, to 1080p. Now, FSR 2.0 at the quality setting at 1080p, I also don't think looks great, but once again, performance-wise, is getting you similar benefits to what you're getting from XCSS at the performance mode. So, yeah, there's that. Now, if we do, just for fun, uh, kick on FSR 2.0 to a more aggressive setting at 1080p, I think it's going to look uh, quite bad. So... <laughs> There's that, but I mean, image quality wise, maybe with comparison to the, um, to XCSS, maybe similar, but um, I think we're actually running into a CPU limit now. You can see my GPU is not able to hit maximum utilization anymore at this frame rate anyway. And so there you have it.
Um, overall, it seems like to me, if FSR is available, uh, FSR 2.0 is available, it seems like the better choice to use um, on this GPU compared to XCSS. But some other games, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, don't have an FSR option. So having XCSS seems like a better than nothing option, especially when you're rendering at high resolutions like 4K. I hope all of you have an excellent day.